everyone. It's Happy Friday. It's wine, please. Wine, please. So, cheers, Tony. It's time to wind down. It is time to wind down, but Gina, <laughs> that's not wine in that glass. Wait. Yes, look, it looks like wine in no, here. It isn't. It isn't. <laughs> so here's the rule. It actually has to be wine. You don't have to drink it, but but you can't put grape juice or whatever that is. And I know this is actually purple carrot, pomegranate, some berry, some healthy thing my daughter made me drink. Um <laughs> Ellen, can I eat while I listen? Of course. I of think course. we could eat. We need some we need some cheese and crackers is what we need. <laughs> um hey Kathy and let's see who all who all do I see in my magic mirror here? Um I'm seeing people popping in. Definitely let us know where you are listening from. What state or country? Tell us somewhere fabulous where you are. It's freezing cold in Denver. Um, like in the teens, I think today, and so I've been I've been huddled inside for days, and and uh, it's warming up here actually in Montreal. It's kind of scary. It probably shouldn't be warming up. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm all for global warming at this point. Um, yeah. These months, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm all for it. And Tony, you've had a busy week of more video yes. creation all week. Video shoots all week, all week, all week. And we started a new series, or at least we recorded uh, the beginning of a new series, which I'm really excited about called That's a Great Question. Yeah. And, uh, so it's uh, it's some of the questions from the Facebook group we already tackled. So uh, that's good. I'm excited. And I, I just want to give a shout out because I see so much content created, so much video content created. And a lot of people go on Facebook lives and they create videos of them going on walks and showing their beautiful scenery. Your videos are meaty, meaty, oh, meaty, meaty. Like they thank really you. do. They, they, I mean, we work together and yet every one of your videos, every one of your pieces of content provoke thoughts and make me think of what do I need to do to improve my business? So if you're not already following Tony's stuff, um, Tony Newman on everywhere. Well, it is interesting because there's a couple Tony Newmans. Yeah, look a couple for, of Tony. Look, look for the Tony Newman that looks like this. That looks like this. <laughs> it's on YouTube when uh, we because we don't quite have it. We we we've, we've put her further down the list just yeah. so everybody knows. There's a the beautiful woman out there um, who's a, a a transgender woman who's also Tony Newman, Tony Newman. and yeah. uh, it, early in her career, not anymore, but early in her career, she made herself famous by talking about all of the celebrities she'd slept with. And so <laughs> clients would come to me with this look on their face. Hi, Bob. Clients would come to me with this look on their face and go, yeah. have you Googled yourself? Like, like do you know? And I go, I know, I know, I know. And that, uh, that was one of our early goals is we need to get that Tony Newman's content pushed down by putting more. Down. So you put out a lot of great content. So if you're not already following Tony, you need to do that. And this week, if you're not in Tony's group, um, this week you had some like very thought provoking, awesome discussions in the innovators advantage. No, no see, I, I get them, innovators. Yeah, see, I get them all mixed up. All the groups. I always go. I just have to click on it and go. Yeah. So we'll have to put the links in here yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. because there are great thought provoking discussions going yeah. on in there on how can we build our business. And I think one of them, even this week, kind of sparked our discussion today of, you know, how do we use emotion to build our business, to connect with our consumers? And you and I were talking about this and we kind of have different spins on it. Yeah. Um, what brought this up in your mind this week? Well, I have to say that it's in my mind all the time because one of our S's is seductive. Right. Um, and so that is an S that's around uh, emotion. Um, and I was supposed to do that video this week. We have a, a technique called play the emotions card and I didn't get there. So it was it was front and center in my mind this week because I was putting that video together. But the other thing is, as you said, and thank you so much for, for those kind words um, in the group yesterday, I, I was saying to myself, how do I get people to actually not do what I call the kind of Facebook thing, which is life is wonderful and everything's beautiful and look at the picture of my perfect, 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 perfect life. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. So I thought, and this is the word that you and I talked about, I thought that the best way to do that was to ask for some honest struggles and for me to go first. Uh, so I did. I went first. I, I posted something that Jared and I really struggle with. Uh, the, the whole thought behind it is that uh, we have to ask ourselves tough questions and then we have to face the tough answers. So our tough question was, why don't we get more referrals? Not to be confused with testimonials, but what is it that we're not doing that we need to think differently about to get the kind of referral is that is somebody writes an email to somebody they know and goes, you need Tony or you need Gina. So right. it was exposing our struggle with that and, and the tough questions we were asking. And that launch, I don't think I've ever seen ever. Ever, that much interact like it was phenomenal and every one of them was very thought-provoking and very like it made me go gosh like on yours referrals we have so many of the clients we work with that we've had to sign sign non-disclosures with that don't want people to know that we do stuff for them Absolutely. and so so we can't even get like they won't even tell people about us um, and then we then the other question was you know about the whole exit strategy in the group and that was an, another emotional going wow you, we, you and I talk about that all the time of like when you won't run your own business how do you leave it eventually not that we want to now but you know those so they're really good discussions if you're not in this group I think it's it's just super helpful as a business um, it, you don't even have to be a business owner. I, I look at it from a business owner perspective, but I think all of us had those questions. So, yeah. And, it I, was think, awesome. and I think as long as we're talking about emotions, see, I've got that. Just can somebody just type into the chat whether or not you can hear the echo on my voice? Uh, no, I don't hear it. Because it, it, it kind of comes in and out. Um, but another thing, as long as we're talking about emotions, is the emotions as business owners or business leaders that we need to keep going. Right. So, so one of the people in the group was talking about the fact, in fact, a couple of people, that they were just losing the passion for their business because of all of this other stuff they have to do. Well, right. it's almost impossible to do what we do if we don't have that passion, if we're not excited about getting up in the morning. Right, right. Is anyone, anybody hearing an echo at all? If you're hearing an, or, or let us know, does the sound quality um, sound good or do you hear an echo? I don't hear the echo. So okay, okay. It's just hopefully, me. maybe it's just, maybe it's in your head. Maybe, maybe all the video. <laughs> yeah, okay, everybody, toast to Tony's uh, echo voice in toast your head. My echo. Okay, let, let's get, uh, yeah, let's, let's talk about, um, now I'll, I'll share one thing I got this week. I, I have multiple pairs of glasses. Oh, you hear the echo, able to discern what you're saying though. Um, so it must, oh, now Ellen said the sound and image look good. No, so I don't know. Bob See, is drinking now, wine as well. And Bob, um, this is Sheena. Bob and I had a, an inside joke about my, my husband always calls me Sheena and Bob accidentally typed my name is Sheena. And so, um, but <laughs> it's in and out yeah. echo. That's interesting. Yeah. So you may, you may, if you hear the echo again, Tony, I don't know if you have a headset handy, just little earbuds. Yeah. Um, you could plug those in. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so I wear glasses. I get them from Warby Parker. I love Warby Parker. We've talked about them being a very innovative company. Um, but in the glasses, you get this little uh, cloth that, you know, to clean your glasses. But on this little cloth that says Warby Parker in a hundred words, it's their brand story. And every word has a number because they literally are counting and they did it in exactly 100 words. They told the story. But as they tell their story, I'm just going to, I'm going to read it quickly, but it listened for the emotional hooks in here because I felt like it immediately made me love their brand, even if I was new to them. It says, once upon a time, a young man left his glasses on an airplane. He tried to buy new glasses, but new glasses were expensive. Why is it so hard to buy stylish glasses without spending a fortune on them, he wondered. He returned to school and told his friends, we should start a company to sell amazing glasses for non-insane prices. We should make shopping for glasses fun, said the other. We should distribute a pair of glasses to someone in need for every pair sold, said a third. Eureka, Warby Parker was born. And now that is the 100 words. But down below in the epilogue, my favorite was, it has a little thing about you just read our entire history. In less time than it takes to wash a dish or consume six baby carrots at a responsible chewing pace. Not bad, 100 words. So they used humor, 
They used um, they told the emotion of how they help other people. So the socially responsible. I thought I took it as a challenge. I sat down this week and was trying to write my not an elevator speech. And that's where I think some people get confused. This is not an elevator speech. This is who are they and what are they about? Mm -hmm. and, and can you do it in a story format that connects on an emotional level, whether it's humor, whether it's and you and I talked about this emotions can be all sorts of things. But I I got it down to 167 words. I couldn't get it. I need to still edit um, down further. But I thought it was a great exercise. Can you tell the story of who you are and why you exist in 100 words? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to put that one in a test. Yeah. But and what, what I would, so hold that up again, the, the yeah. little thing. So this <clears throat> is everything that we talk about. Yeah. This is an unexpected encounter. This exactly. is not a better glass cleaner. This is a different glass cleaner, right? Look at what they did. They yeah. actually numbered all the words. Didn't they need did. to do that, but it was different. It was different and strategic. Look, they even numbered the words in the title. They got yeah. the little epilogue. They used emotions. So here's the thing. One, is it surprising? Absolutely. Was. Two, is it strategic? You bet it's strategic. They told you all about what they do, including giving glasses to other people and that it's easy and that it's not expensive. Totally strategic. Seductive? Absolutely. Why was it seductive? Everything that you said, right? right. Because it's got a story. Sustainable? Well, here's the thing. You can get a lot of glasses from Warby Parker. And if every time your glasses show up, that one glass cleaner cloth is the same, right. eventually, you will stop thinking it's surprising. Right. And it's really simple. So full, full 5S points. I'm so excited. And that one's going in my book. Yeah, this is a great one. And I again, I love the fact it has their website. I immediately read it to my entire family. We were laughing about the uh, the carrots eat it, eaten at a responsible rate. And it, it just was one of those things that you start talking about and sharing. So I, I thought because it was fabulous. We don't care. We don't share. We don't share. We don't care. We don't share. And obviously, that's the point of this emotion stuff is how do you connect? How do you make somebody care about your message? without doing the whole, look how wonderful we are and what a difference we can make in your life. This is right. written in the third person, for heaven's sakes. Like, it's yeah. brilliant. It's, it's absolutely brilliant. brilliant. And I think that in our businesses, we don't think of small little things like that as touch point opportunities and the immense Huge. impact it can have. Yeah, I thought I just thought it was um, so brilliant. And I, I love when the more I kept thinking about stories and the power of stories and how when you're telling a story to really think of how you're crafting it, that are you connecting to a desire that the other person has? Like in this, we all have a desire to spend less on glasses. Um, we have a desire to help other people. So they met some internal desires. And I think a great story does meet an internal desire. There's a character in the story. There's a hero in the story that's solving the problem. These three characters in the story become, you know, these people who are helping solve the problem. But yet I'm also part of the story because I bought glasses. I'm a hero because I helped someone. And I thought, how do we do that in our own businesses? Are we writing and crafting our stories in such a way that we're connecting with people on those levels? So um, a good challenge, I think, to do. But the, the word that I kept thinking of is being vulnerable. A lot of times in stories, and, and then I thought, I guess it's not really vulnerable, but you and I were talking about the different types of emotions that we can connect on. And you said, you know, what gets shared. Yes. So if we don't care, we don't share. I'm curious in our audience right now, the last piece of content you shared, what was the emotion? Was it something funny? So was it humor? Was it something that was sad? You know, a story of a dog. Um, hey, Jim, tuning in hey, from Jim. a little village in Mexico. Love oh, it. See, that I emotion, We you just evoked happy in in me. Oh, I, 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 for me, we evoked envy. <laughs> envy, yeah. I'm curious. So everyone listening, I want you to type in the comments, what was the emotion that you think evoked in you and that caused you to share a piece of content somewhere on any social channel. Unless <laughs> maybe you're a type of person you never share content. But I, I look at it and go, humor is one that I see a lot. People share. Inspiration. Um, 
Inspiration. Yeah, those are always great to share. Yeah, I don't think a sales promotional message is ever even <laughs> unless it's really different. Oh, interesting. Right? Because people don't share better, people share different. They That's don't share better, they share different. So you've got to get home somewhere. Yeah. That they go, oh my gosh, that really touches me. And therefore, it's going to touch other people too. And that's why I'm going to share. Right. Outrage. The last uh, thing Kim shared was, was outrage. outrage. Yeah. <laughs> outrage, which Ooh, that is, you know, don't we share that more often if we're angry about something? Jim, yeah. I'm writing that one down. Yes. Yeah, outrage. That is a great motivator. If you're provocative, if you can provoke outrage, I said something recently, I won't repeat what it was, but that might have provoked um, a little bit of outrage in a certain group of people. And boy, they were very vocal. We got their attention. Yeah. Yeah. So I think those kind of things do, you know, those do work. Um, I said humor. Yeah. Humor. Um, that I, I tend to share things that are funny a lot. I mean, you do too. I see a lot of uh, stuff. It's just humor. It's funny. It's a, it's an interesting look at something in life. So again, if you are creating content or information about your brand and trying to connect, what is the emotion that's going to be evoked by the other person? And here's um, the thing. Here's the thing. Um, is that we need, we, Emotions are a double-edged sword because we always want to try to trigger an emotion that we want associated with our brand. So when you and I and Alain share something, right, with that that is funny, it's because we're we're all good with right. people associating funny with our with brand. The, right. But emotions can cut two ways. In other words, you can say or post something on uh, social media that provokes an emotion in your followers that you do not want That's a good point. the brand. And so the example I always give are the people who go on and on and on about their drinking champagne in the first, you know, first class cabin and look at my wonderful this. And I'm thinking, you know, the only thing I'm thinking is get over yourself. And that's not an emotion that I would want to have associated with my brand. Right. So emotions right. can have two uh, two very different uh, contexts. Now, Bob was saying something you had a chance to read. I haven't read it yeah. yet. Yeah, the, the conversation in your yeah. group yesterday that we were talking about. And it's, yeah, that, that emotional response. It was a, there was a lot of really good emotional triggers in those conversations that I thought um, – was it again it made me think and be introspective about my business and go oh yeah that you know that's true too and this is a good point but um, i love what, what bob said is that it inspired him to release inner thoughts and share because his experience might touch someone someone else so, interesting right? people don't share if they don't care so we're right. not just talking about sharing from a social media perspective it's right if you want your customers to share with you then you have to share with them. You have to demonstrate the behavior that you want them to. I'm not yeah. saying that, that, that the people in the group are customers. That's not what I meant. But in general, yeah. We, yeah. we have to go first. Right. Yeah. We have to go first. And I, and I do think that is important for us to look at is how are we sharing those? Are we being more intentional to look at the emotions that could be evoked? When you said that, some, you know, sometimes we evoke emotions that we didn't intend to. It just triggered in me. Every time I hear the subway commercial during the, um, Olympics, during the Olympics, they're playing subway commercials like every 30 seconds, it feels like. And it's this head banging music that's like, it makes me angry every time the commercial comes on. I'm going, I'm sure that's not what they intended, but I get angry every time the subway, I don't get hungry. I get angry. Um, and and I love, and that and that's such a good point because they don't know that that they they haven't thought about the fact that putting that music and that commercial on so often in Canada we're not getting the subway commercial, but by putting that on so often that they're driving people nuts, and that's not an emotion they want associated with their brand. Which right. brings, brings me back to Jim's comment about outrage because I'd be really curious about. I mean, I, I'm not expecting you to tell us, Jim, but but that may have been something that they wanted to provoke. So, for example, I can imagine somebody sharing something unjust that's going on in the world and that right. Jim would share that because it's outrage. He, he has outrage over that situation. A different situation might be we share something provocative and people are outraged because we shared it. 
because right. that's our opinion. And we might be fine with that outrage because that can stir up some debate too, but that's a different kind of outrage. When we post something provocative and when a brand posts something, one of the things we talk about in our work is great brands take a stand. So that goes back to your, your area, your CVS, right? right. There are people who are going to be outraged that they stop selling cigarettes, uh, all, you know, in 2000. Right. But yes, was okay. Uh, was okay yeah. with, with creating that emotion. Right. They're, they want to take a stand. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's interesting. Yeah. Inspiration and great ideas always get, I mean, those get shared and spread because we hope to inspire others and we hope yeah. to spread that um, message. So, you know, then again, it makes us think about our, do we share content that's inspirational or is it just content? You know, I, th I think I'm always looking at it from that standpoint of the content that we're creating, whether it's in our marketing materials, whether it's in our customer contact, whether, whether it's in our emails, is there a way to be inspirational? There's um, there's a, a gentleman that I follow religiously. His name is John Morrow. And if you do any writing, you should follow John. John is one of the most successful bloggers in the world. And I, I take his courses and I went to a retreat with him. But John has a lot of, excuse me, a lot of successful blogs. But his most successful blog, which is at this point, I believe, over six million views or something ridiculous like that, is titled how I gave up my life, moved away, and whatever. And it's the story of his disease because he has, I believe it's multiple sclerosis. And it's the story of how his disease impacted his life. That article has been shared and shared and shared wow. and shared and shared because it's a powerful story. Now, John has written a lot of blogs with a lot of great information, and they have been shared too. And as I'm sitting here talking to you, we're talking and I'm thinking, yeah, I haven't, maybe that's what we, you know, I haven't written a blog like that yet. I've been so focused on the content piece and delivering value. But sometimes what we don't realize is that blog that John wrote was the biggest value he could have given because of the emotional connection he made. Which there's, there's my word vulnerable. And this week something happened in my Instagram feed that made me realize when I was looking at my Instagram feed, I thought I'm always looking for the perfect picture to take, or I'm always looking for, okay, the perfect setting. I don't want to take it. Like, I don't want you to see my floor because it has dog toys on it or, you know, whatever. And we're always trying to make things look perfect. And I thought, you know, what's interesting is, is when we share the vulnerable, when we share the raw, when we tell the story of our failures, more people connect than any success that we can share or any great content that's helpful to them. It's those vulnerable stories that I think people just somehow they connect and they bond to you. So, and I made that commitment. I was like, I need to share more of that raw, vulnerable. Um, yeah, I'm getting chills here because I know exactly. I know. I know exactly what I what I need to share that I've been resisting sharing. But it was really interesting. So, um, you know, some of the people watching or, or or listening are in the speaking industry, and I I was at a speaking event the other night, and and the person giving the event said which I agree with, the stage is not a place for therapy. I agree with that. Right. However, then they followed with, um, you should only talk about your challenges, your struggles, if you have been victorious. Right. And I put up my hand and I said, no, 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 because there are struggles in our lives that none of us ever get over. I said, you can, you can share them when you are ready to own the struggle. When you it's learn something from it. When you learn something from yeah. it that, that you can acknowledge that this is a struggle and talk about it without being being vulnerable, without being emotional. But if the only time people got up to talk about shit, sorry, was, was after they've accomplished it, like, yeah, I was on the street and now look at me, I make three, two billion dollars a year. Right. Right. Those are great, that's but, not, but yeah. that's not necessarily real life. Most of us have struggles that we deal with every single day. But if we are able to own those struggles and own the emotion in them and the lessons in them for other people, I think we're ready to share them. Which to me, I see that as victorious because yeah. I look at it and say the failures in my life and the struggles that I've been through because I've learned something from them and I see value in them. I feel victorious. It doesn't mean that I came out and now I've, I'm now I have three Ferraris in my garage yeah. that, you know, I'm posing next to or whatever or with the in Fiji. But, you know, it's one of those things that um, I think 
yeah, once we are, when we have enough distance that we can look back at the lessons, I think those stories connect. I think those stories are powerful lessons for others. I think we learn from them. And I think if a brand can tell those type of stories, I mean, look how many brands try to connect to a story. I mean, again, during the Olympics, you see this a lot, that Toyota is trying to connect to, they show somebody that was born without a, yeah, and I like, they're born no without sense. a leg. And, and, <laughs> yeah. which, which brings up another point, is that there are certain things and certain emotions that actually make no sense with your right. brand. And, and right. if you're trying to force feed of the Olympics, it's like, it's like the Oscars. Like, it drives me freaking out of my mind. Yeah. At least try to find a way that it makes sense. Right. Yeah. Right. That is, that is one that on there I go, okay, how they're t trying to put a spin that that has to do with their brand. I don't know how they're making that connection, but you know, sometimes brands are trying to connect to a story that's not their own to tie into it, but how can we be, and maybe again, it, it does take being a little vulnerable to share some of those stories with others. Um, Jim says, question. um, there's a number of shares, likes that your post gets that make you believe your post was successful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll, I'll let you, I have an opinion on that one, but yeah. you can go. I, I look at it and go, I, I've gotten over the fact I don't care if one person likes or shares a post. I don't care. My thing is I want to put, I almost have started looking at my social channels as I want to look back in five years and almost see it as a journal of my, of my journey. I want to see the lessons I've brought forward. I want to see the, the tips that I've shared, the people that I've helped. I want to see the struggles that I went through. It's a journal for me, especially I look at tools like Instagram. It's a journal of what's happening. And I think being real and raw without caring how many people, I mean, there are some people that are so worried about, they'll want you to remove things because it didn't get enough likes. Now that's probably more teenagers, but um, I, yeah, I think and, that's. And yeah. I think we can fall into that trap, Jim. And I certainly have fallen into it as Gina knows about, Oh, 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 let's check. We had, we had one video and, and it was an early video and we posted it and it got, it, it shot up in very few days over 2000 views. So right. It wasn't so much the number, Jim, but what it what it did was it 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 showed me it was the first video we'd launched, so it reassured me that that there was value. Um, and then the next one we shared, uh, we posted, I think, had seven hundred and sixty two. And then they bounced back and forth. And a great example for those of are are on the the call here today that were in the group yesterday. If you look at it, in spite of the fact that that was the most interaction I've ever seen, I think there were eleven of us. Now there's 143 people in the group. So am I caught up, Jim, in the fact that it was the 11 of us and that it was the 11 of us who actually are the most active in the group? No, for me, I wouldn't have cared if one person shared right. the story. Now, right. if nobody had reacted, if I had put that out there and nobody said anything, I wouldn't have thought I wasn't successful. I would have looked at myself and said- I missed the mark. I, I missed the mark. Of what Have I thought my audience wanted. Yeah. Gina and her brilliance and her social media, but we do social media to spread the word. Right. So if nobody is spreading anything overall, if it's not leading back to your website, and Gina's more this expert, then if everything's going up there and like you hear crickets every single time, then that's not about the marketplace. That's about the content you're sharing. Right. And that's that's what I do look, Jim, to answer that, that um, point what is successful i think what is successful is that i'm sharing content that my audience wants to hear and that they need so my audience could be five people my audience could be 10 people my audience could be a hundred thousand people um i think it's am i am i gauging the content but not getting too caught up on it because you can get so caught up on it that then you lose sight of keep producing more great content um and sharing with people and having discussions and starting relationships with these people, which is the intent to grow your business. But I think if we get caught up thinking a successful anything is one that gets a hundred thousand likes, it may not be. It may just be that it was hilarious. It's kind of like people who get on Oprah and they think that's going to all of a sudden make them a, a you know, a billionaire and um, they, they get the exposure and they go back to being their normal self. And there's no, yeah. I mean, I, we have a friend of our family who is on Oprah playing guitar with Lenny Kravitz and we, and, and he's today, he's looking for a job, you know, yeah. so it doesn't mean because you're getting all the views 
And the other thing, Jen, that I do, and, and obviously the people who say you need to follow the numbers is because it's in their best interest to follow the numbers. I never actually look at the number. I look at the percentage. So somebody could have 20,000 sure. likes, but they've got 80,000 fall or whatever it is. I'm, I'm, I'm making shit up here. But it's what percentage of the people who follow them are connecting with their clients. <laughs> And what do you want that we have a small newsletter list? We do not have 80,000 people on our newsletter. We've got a high open rate, a higher than average open yeah, rate. That makes high. me happy. That makes me happy. So Jim, well, think about percentages as opposed to numbers. And I always, I, I always say, go look at Seth Godin's um, Facebook page. He has a Facebook business page with like 300 plus thousand followers to it. But the percentage is very small of people who actually engage on there. Yeah. But he's getting people that are reading his content in it, wherever they are. So I yeah. think that's another thing is we have to look at if it's helpful content, um, is it where they can connect with it where they are? So now, um, I know we're getting to the end, but Elena's is brought up. Yes, this is yes. a great point. Um, so this week I was in a workshop on no turning no into yes. One question was shared. Oh, one question was share with your neighbors a no that you received that blocked you for years. Oh, interesting. Refusals are among the emotions we need to address. Uh, yeah, when I mean, it's kind of like the thing of you get a thousand yeses and one person says no, or you get a thousand people who like something and one person says no, and we we take that with us and carry that as a scar. Um, but I think that that's an interesting, the whole concept of rejection, Helen, if I understand you correctly, is is a powerful emotion. Rejection uh, leads to insecurity, leads to lack of confidence. Uh, and if that's an emotion that um, that is logical to link with your brand because your brand helps people get over rejection or helps them not get rejected as often or helps build their confidence, then reminding people of those moments of rejection, you're right, could be a very, very pa powerful emotional mo uh, motivator. Right. It's a great yeah, one. That is a great one. Um, yeah, yeah. Looking at that. Yeah. Great, great comments. And, and Bob, yeah, Bob said, you know, yesterday in the group, Tony had inspired him to open up because he was inspired by those who commented ahead of me. So sometimes hearing someone else's struggle or hearing someone else's story inspires us to do the same and i think again when our with our brands are we putting something out there that can inspire others to follow suit uh, maybe sharing some real testimonials and not testimonials of just talking about how great we are but maybe testimonials of people who have struggled with something and then overcame it by working with you can be the type of um, story that can connect with other people who are in that same situation yeah yeah, you got me. You got me thinking. I know a lot, lot to chew on. Um, yeah, we're already at twelve thirty. How does this half hour go by so fast? Um, but it is it's wine time. It is wine time. Wine time. <laughs> wine time. So everybody can Except grab the glass. For anybody who's cheating and has put some horrendous concoction that's got carrots and something in Purple her carrots. Purple Not just regular carrots. Purple carrots. Purple carrots. <laughs> Coconut water, purple carrots, all kinds of stuff. Um, Taylor, it's your fault. Thank you, Ellen. She says, I love these half hours. We love that you're joining us. We love um, if, if you know you know somebody that you think would benefit from this, we would love it if you'd share this and share the word. Pass it around. Check out the groups. Tony, we need to put the group names in oh. the on, on the screen here. Yeah, um, I think you're the only person who doesn't know the name of my group. <laughs> And you're in it. In fact, I think you're an administrator of it. But you really have no I, I, I finally, not to know the name of the group. I finally got the in, in, innovators. In, I mean, inside oh, no. <laughs> influential innovators and DIY social. Influential innovators. Uh, DIY social. These are too big. These words are too big for me. They're too big for me. I need simple words like Twitter. Um, have a good weekend, everybody. Have a glass of wine. Jim, I'm jealous. You're obviously someplace warm. Uh, and that's awesome. I think I'm jealous. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. That's emotion. It's, that's it emotion. looks it looks awesome. He has a hard hat, so maybe he's going through the zip line through the trees. Oh, he's right white, now. White water I know. Has an incredible company, Whitewater Rafting. So yeah, um, just like, it ties in so well. Um, are we okay. happy? Yes. I think, I think. Everyone have a wonderful weekend. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, everyone. Bye. And we'll oh, and if anybody has any ideas of things they want us to cover on Wind Down, you Let can know. us again. Yeah. Social and <laughs> influential innovators. Look, I just said it. Influential innovators group <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> bye, everybody. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.